I want you to turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll start there. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, whoops, I'm not there. Is it 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4? Sorry, I have to do that about once a seminar. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly, says expressly, but the Holy Spirit dis, uh, distinctly and expressly declares that in the latter times some will turn away from the faith giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. We're having that now. Doctrines of demons, seducing spirits. These are spirits that are especially assigned to lead people astray. Okay, if the devil can't get you cold, he'll take the hot ones and make them really weird. Now, all throughout history, the, there's nothing new under the sun. We had the same things taking place back in the 70s when I first came into the church in the 60s, the 50s. I've talked to old time Pentecostal people. They had the same type of things. But we have to be more discerning in this day and age than ever before. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I got to get over there. Are you there? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. When you're there, say amen because I'm not there yet. I might be the last one to get there. Tim, where is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Let me see here. Well, it's, oh, wait, there it is. There it is. I got it. Okay. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. I want you to notice here what it says. Okay, let's go 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 first. Okay, we'll start there. And it says this, We are bound to thank God always on your brethren as, as is meet because of your faith growing exceedingly and the charity every time one of you toward each other abounds. So that, is that 1 Thessalonians? No. 2 Thessalonians? That's 1 Thessalonians. Oh, first Thessalonians. Well, you're supposed to tell me 2 Thessalonians. <laughs> Am I in 1 Thessalonians or 2 Thessalonians? What Thessalonians is this? Oh, Jesus, help us all. All right, look, look at verse 3. Look at verse 3 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I am so, I apologize. You know what I was? I was in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, I think, wasn't I? Okay. What's going on here? This is weird. Let no man deceive you. Everybody say, let no man deceive you. Now, doesn't that sound more like my sermon there, what we're on? Yeah, that makes sense. I was wondering, where am I going with this? Uh, let no man deceive you by any means, for this day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, right? At the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes all that exalts itself above all and is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is the thing that is happening. They're trying to infiltrate the church because they want to get in there so that they can take over and say they're God. And, and uh, this is what the devil does. The devil wants to sit in the temple of God. Isn't that true? You know, and we know that that'll all come to pass. But look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. And it says, the mystery of, of iniquity does already work. It's working now, right? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, some people say that's the, the, the Holy Ghost. Some people say that's the church. I believe it's the church because the Holy Ghost doesn't, he, he's not taken completely out of everything uh, because people get saved during the tribulation period. But I want you to know, praise God, that as long as the church is here, we can restrain devils. Isn't that good news? To a certain point, we can, we can restrain that. He says, and then shall the wicked one be revealed... Whom shall, shall, the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who comes, in works, uh, working of, uh, comes after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So here we see Satan has power, sign, lying signs and wonders. Now, for the Christian, Satan's been a defeated foe. His power is stripped. But Tim was very accurate. Demons without God, you, you have, you're no match for that. Demons are these fallen angels and stuff. They're powerful, you know. And so thank God we got God. Everybody say amen. amen. However, I want you to notice that deception will come in the form of lying. What? Everybody say it out loud. Lying, signs, and wonders. Somebody says, well, Pastor Tom, now, you know, that's uh, down in Panama where we go. Well, you got that right. I mean, you got wild lying signs and wonders down there. You got, you got the occult doing signs and wonders. You got witchcraft doing signs and wonders. However, 
When you've got Christians who are doing signs and wonders, if we're not careful, what can happen is some of those lying signs and wonders can try to creep over into Christianity. Now, Tim was bringing some of this out. I've got to tell you some things here that it's not going to be popular for me to tell you, and I certainly won't get a lot of meetings because I say this. <laughs> if you know anything about me, I, I, I don't, I, our ministry has never grown to the place it probably could if I compromised some of these things. Because a lot of, you know, it's just not popular to say these things. But somebody's got to say them, so I guess I will today. Thank God for it. I got plenty to do. I'm not concerned about fame and fortune and all that kind of junk. Uh, as an example, we operate in the supernatural power of God. We were in Panama. I got to tell this story real quick. We were in Panama here not too long ago. Now, I have, fa I have favor overseas like few preachers. Nobody, nobody in America I know has favor like I do in some of the areas I go to. I mean with who I call would be like uh, the Oral Roberts or Kenneth Copeland of Central America is one of our friends. I mean, and he has me in his church. I mean, he loves us. He thinks we're, our ministry is great, wonderful. And, and he's, a good, he's a good guy and he's a busy guy. And he has, he's on television in three, three and a half million homes down there in Central America. And uh, so he brings me into the church. And uh, it's always a privilege to be there. It's a while, though. They run them in and run them out all day in that church. Just, whoosh, you got 20 minutes, you know, of a half an hour. It's not my type of deal because I like to take my time and, you know, lay hands on your little heads and everything. So it's, it's a difficult time for me because I have to really hurry through my sermon and everything. Last time we were there, got 2,000 people filled with the Holy Ghost in one meeting, praise God. Isn't that neat? Amen. So anyway, praise God for that. But... Uh, I'm fixing to go preach. We're sitting in the motel room. Stella and I are praying. And we're sitting by a hill in Panama, a hotel room. You look up and there's a flag on top of this hill up there in Panama. The Panama flag kind of flies over this uh, Panama City there. And we're praying and all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere. See, you, you, visions and dreams and gifts of the Spirit, except for uh, speaking in tongues, because speaking in tongues, we can control that. Right? See, I show moku. I just spoke. Nobody went, Hoo! God didn't come on me and go, make me do something. <laughs> That's the only gift of the Spirit that works that way. And interpretation, which comes with, if, if my wife came up and gave a message, the gift of interpretation would come on in me because that's what God wanted. And you can pray and interpret your prayers. Everybody say amen. But the rest of the gifts of the Spirit don't work like that. You can't turn them on and off. I want you to listen to me care very carefully here because you're going to see some differences in what's going on, what a lot of people are teaching today. So I'm down there. I didn't expect this any more than I, than I expected, you know, um, Colonel Sanders to fix me dinner. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not praying. Don't ever pray for a vision. Don't ever pray for visions. Don't ever pray for dreams. That's, you're getting into areas that, that we're discussing here. People are teaching that you can do that. You cannot do that. You do that. You, nowhere in the Bible does it teach you to pray for supernatural experiences to happen to you. It's very dangerous. Fasting can be very dangerous. If, you, if, you, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, heathens fast. Satan is fast. They take you through a purification process. Don't they, Tim? And it's part of their ritual process. People in Hinduism and people over in Muslims, they fast. They fast for days and because they're, they're trying to appease their God or get to their God. When we fast, we do it because we just want to get a flesh under control. Yep. Everybody say amen. And to break yokes and bondages and stuff. We do it for the right reasons. You don't do it for 40 days. More people have been, been deceived on a fast than almost anything I know. I'm telling you, I'm just telling you what I've seen in 34 years. People get weird doctrines. Cults start because of a revelation that comes through fasting, the wrong type of fasting. Are you all listening to me? Yeah. I hope you are. I didn't say fasting was wrong. I said you've got to do it the right way. Amen. So I'm sitting down there in Panama, and I certainly wasn't fasting. I think I finished off half a pizza, and I'm sitting there, and we're... <laughs> Sometimes that can cause a vision or a dream, too, you know. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, boom, I saw the ruling spirit over Panama, this country of Panama. I knew what it was immediately. It was an ugly-looking thing. And this, this spirit was being, I saw angels flying up and, and taking a rope 
and roping this thing. As the people of Panama pray, because the revival's breaking, you know, the revival down there, they're, they're, they're throwing ropes around this thing, and this thing is madder than a hatter, and it's spinning around, and it's, 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 you, you'd have to bleep him, you know what I mean? Bleep, 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 because he is, but every time this thing moved, it's, it, it, it became something different. I told my wife, I said, uh, what I saw, I said, man, that thing kept changing, it kept changing into something else. And then the Lord says, go to your computer, <laughs> they, the Lord says, go to your computer and Google. The Lord knows about Google. He said, go Google the name Loki. That's the name of that spirit, Loki. I said, oh, lo what? Loki. He even told me how to spell it. So I went over and put Loki in there. And you know what came up? A, a Norwegian spirit, a devil that people worship in the occult world in Scandinavian religion. A shapeshifter. That's, I just wanted to talk about that. And that's the history of Panama. You know, one minute it's socialism, next minute it's a dictator, and then it's democracy. It, and, and every time that spirit would change, see, they would change. And so the, 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 the president who's in there now is very conservative, Ronald Reagan conservative, see. And he's trying to change this nation. And so they had that thing roped up, man, on political, politicals changing. The finances are flowing. We could learn something from Panama and America right now. Yeah. So I saw this. I had these type of things happen to me, and I got to go because the Lord says, now go preach it to the three million people or whatever in Panama. The, that program down there is one of the most popular programs in all of Panama. You know, unlike American television, which has no ratings now, it went whoosh, boom. I wouldn't even get on television probably in America. But I do want to go in Latin America. It just went shh, boom. But up there, it's rated real high. People watch it. And I was able to share this, and it captivated, just exploded across the nation when I shared it, you know, this vision. And the Lord told me to, or I wouldn't do that. The point I'm try trying to make is, is that we have people today who feel like their, their role in Christianity is to teach people to go another step forward. And what they're doing is, and, and I'm, not, I'm not against anybody, I'm for them. Everybody say, man, I want to see everybody, you know, do good. But we have, you know, Jesus talked about it, didn't he? False Christ. How many know what false Christ is? You know, people think of Jim Jones, people think of all that. False Christ is just false anointed ones. There are people who say they're anointed when they're not. It could be a false anointing or a mixed anointing. One minute somebody can be operating in the Spirit of God, see it a lot. Because I know the Spirit of God. They can be operating in the Spirit of God and they go along and they're operating and then all of a sudden it, the Spirit of God stops anointing them to operate that way. But because the crowd is there to, draw, to really want more, we want more prophecy. We want, you know, they're inside they're saying, oh, you know, and, and they're pulling and God's saying, stop. I said what I wanted to say. They push through and then familiar spirits come on. Did y'all hear what I just said now? Now, I know this is not going to be real popular, but, 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 but for those who have any kind of caring about the church and the body of Christ, we've got to learn about this because this is happening across the nation a lot. People coming out of the occult, they see some of the same manifestations we do amongst charismatics. <laughs> if you go to the occult and you go to, I've, I've talked to them, they'll see things like this. They have demonic, what they call demonic healings. They have exorcisms or deliverance. Exorcism, by the way, is not a good term. That's a magical formula. The only way, place you see exorcism in the Bible is the idiots who try to use Jesus' name when they didn't have the name of Jesus to use. Right? And so, but they have, they, uh, witches are called upon. I know because I just ministered to a lady who had them come to her house. I said, that didn't help, did it? She says, no, it got worse. Witches do exorcisms, supposedly, right? Sometimes in voodoo ceremonies, you'll see people fall and shake, right? And uh, sometimes you'll even see them laugh. You'll see false gifts of prophecy. They'll prophesy. They have words of, quote, you know, the devil counterfeits everything. You all understand what I'm talking about here. Counterfeits everything. 
Uh, we were in Panama not too long ago, and we were in a, a certain church. And in this certain church, they, had, they went into frenzies, man. And, and, and they thought they were having a move of God. I knew all the time. These people are, be, are yielding to demon spirits right there in the church. And they, couldn't tell, they didn't know the difference. And most Christians would have said, wow, isn't that, you know, sister so-and-so, she's, she, look at her jerk. I'm going, man, stay away from me. I don't want those kind of people laying hands on me. Do you? Think about this. Laying on of hands is a very solemn thing. God's word tells us don't do, it, don't do it all the time. Do it suddenly on anybody. He says, you know, because there's an impartation between your hand and something can be imparted. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, and I certainly don't want you to be confused, and I certainly don't want you to go out and say, I'm not going to any other meeting, but know where you're going, please. Know who's preaching. Know their background. Know who they're submitted to. Know what group they come from. Because you get in a meeting, whether you know it or not, stuff can be imparted unto you that you don't want. My wife and I, were, uh, uh, we, we preach in all kinds of different churches. I have friends who did believe different ways. Some of them believe different ways about this than I do. They're wrong, I'm right. Y'all understand? You cannot turn the gifts of the Spirit on and off. You can't say and just step by faith and just say you're going to step into something unless God is, is, is moving on you to do that. And Stella and I went to a meeting where they, this prophetic group, everybody say prophetic. But you see there's the prophetic and there's the pathetic And we went to this meeting, and you know, the stuff was being shared, and stuff was all okay and everything. There wasn't anything really weird that happened. In fact, they, I got up and exhorted the people, and because we fit in, we can go to groups and things and, and fit in. I, I, I'm not against anybody, you know, I want to help them. But then there was this meeting they were going to have the next day for all the preachers, and they said this. This is how they termed it. Watch out for this. I'm, this, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you what to watch out for. Are you ready? They said this. Everybody who comes to this meeting for the lunchtime meeting will get a word from the Lord. You cannot tell everybody they're going to get a word from the Lord. You cannot and should not call a prophet thinking you're going to get a word from the Lord. It's not scriptural. New Testament, you got the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, I got the Holy Ghost. You don't need anybody to interpret your dream or your vision. There's a lot of that dream interpretation stuff. Now, now, now Tim will tell you, a lot of this stuff gets on the edge, man. You know, we get relying on men. We get relying on stuff. You got to learn how to rely on God. Got to learn how to grow up. Got to learn how to hear from God yourself. Everybody say amen. amen. See, so we went to this meeting and, and I, I fought it. I said to them, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go to the meeting. Well, yes, you do. And they kept me, you know, we went back and forth. Me and my wife went back and forth. And we were with them. They were driving. And against my better judgment, because I'm a nice guy, we yielded and went. We sat down there. You know what the first thing that happened? This guy jumps up, who I'd never seen before. I don't want a, uh, somebody prophesying over me I'd never seen before, unless it's under, under the, the, the tutorage of somebody I trust. I don't know these people. I've never met this guy. You know, he jumps up and he comes, he comes <clears throat> running over to me and he says, you know, thus saith the Lord or something. And he says, you, and he pointed at me, you beat your wife. And right then I thought, I have a word from the Lord. I'm going to beat you. Because <laughs> everybody in the room that knew me goes, what? And they, knew me that they also knew me from the old days. And they said, he better shut up. Because if I cross that line today, you wouldn't want to see it. You know what I mean? So, I'm th and this guy's going off, you beat your wife, you do this, you do that. I couldn't believe, before I, before I could do anything or stop it, he reached over and he touched Stella, my wife. Now, my Stella's from Central America. Stella's from Central America. She, she's used to, see, she knows about witchcraft and demons and stuff. She knows when something's right or wrong. She's got a lot of discernment. And she don't buy on about half the stuff we, most people buy on. Touched her, 
And when, when, when it did, a demon got on my wife, Stella. Literally, she was shaking. She was fearful. She, would, she said, we had to take her out to the car. I had to literally get that thing off my wife. That thing tried to come into her through that so-called prophet. Are y'all, everybody say amen. Now, what was the problem? The problem was, number one, he wasn't a prophet. Number two, I don't know where he came from. I don't know his lifestyle. Number three, they believe that you can turn these things on and off, that somehow you can, because you stand in the office of a prophet, they say you can prophesy anytime you want. Stay, write that down. Stay away from anybody who says you can prophesy or move in the gifts of the Spirit anytime you want to because you stand in an office. That's dangerous. And, and this is being taught today in some groups. Everybody say amen. amen. Don't, you know, people need to, to draw attention to the Lord Jesus Christ, not themselves. Um, I was in a meeting not too long ago here, uh, years ago when I first started, actually, not that many years ago. And I was in a meeting, and this man was uh, getting to be well-known. He was on television. And he had a legitimate ministry. But you see, the problem with it was he, he came from a group that didn't put a lot of emphasis on the Word of God. They put more emphasis on spiritual gifts. So he's operating in spiritual gifts, and people are, and he's starting to get fame and fortune. He's on television. And he, all of a sudden, you know, he did real well for a minute, and then he stops at a lady in the audience. And I'm, the, I'm there, I'm watching this. He stops at a lady in the audience and says, I have a message from, from a dead relative. Now, folks, we all did that, right? But half the crowd goes, whoo, praise God. You see? Now, that, that, I said that to shock you, but this is going on today. In some of the groups that are the most popular in charismatic circles, some of their books sell the highest. They are beginning to get into the edge of some of these things. Let me give you another example. We were in a, we were in a uh, conference not too many years ago, many, back, back in the 1980s which is not a long time ago. And there was a lady brought into this particular conference who supposedly had these, was a prophetess, and this lady had blood that would appear in her hands. And the blood would appear in her hands, and sometimes she'd have oil pour out of her hands. Okay? That's stigmata. My wife immediately goes, oh, you know, I mean, this is, and, and, we, and she just, and I just thought, that, that's creepy, that's weird. And this lady's walking around there putting their hands and praying for people, you know, and all this stuff. Well, a little later on, this particular individual, she went on for a while and got all these meetings out of this and, and uh, went on, and then she was exposed. And, and to find out, it was all fakery. It was all uh, being put on. And, um, and, and, and she would have feathers appear in her meetings, you know. And, and, and all of a sudden she would, you know, Tim was talking about feathers. And she would, all of a sudden, she, you, and, but, you know, she, she'd have these feathers and gold dust and different things. Folks, that, a lot of that stuff's just sorcery. Found out later that this particular person was really into witchcraft. And actually, eventually, a pastor tried to help her. Somebody, if I called his name, everybody in here would know who he was. He passed now. But, you know, I was trying to help her, but she never really got out. She would not repent of her witchcraft. See, a lot of people get rich because of the gifts of, that they got from being in witchcraft. And they get large crowds and stuff, but it's not really God, see. Well, she was exposed. Rick Renner, some different people exposed her. Actually, they filmed her doing this, and they, and they saw how she was getting names I was calling out names. Somebody here named Augustine. You know. Well, what they did is they were walking around getting the names off the Bibles. You know, all this, this stuff. It was a parlor trick, man. She's putting these, these, she's throwing these feathers and gold dust would appear. And, you know, sometimes manna. You know. Well, now, I, I don't mean to be rude, nor do I, but one of the largest groups that people are going to see their, their meetings and stuff today. And they're, 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 they're inviting a lot of this into their meetings. And people, this lady was exposed as a false prophetess in, 19, in the 1980s. They are now having her in her meeting. She's back. And nobody even sees it. And I sit here and I, I can't believe that we're that gullible to think that this particular person now is back and people don't even check it out. How many know that blood appearing in your hands is not a ministry? It's weird. 
If it is real, it's demons. How many know that filling up an oil pot with oil coming out of your hands is not some kind of ministry? That's strange. I wouldn't want any of that oil flying on me. Have you ever had uh, oil in your hands? Yeah, a little bit at times when the Holy Spirit came on me. I've had, had that manifestation, but I never filled up a jar. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say amen. amen. <laughs> we were in, Pan oh, we were in a, a certain area, uh, and there was a man there that had went to a church. And this is a large, large church, full gospel church in this particular area. And he came to me for help. He said, when I was, he said, I went to this church. He said, uh, uh, somebody prayed for me and I fell under the power. And he said, another man came from the audience. How many know you shouldn't be coming from the audience and doing nothing to people up in the altar? I tell people, just go sit down. If I don't know you, I don't want you laying hands on people. People think I'm mean about that. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They think everybody should be able to participate in everything. Well, I, I say this, we need to know you a little bit before you start participating in stuff. See? And uh, so he's laying up there. This guy comes from up here, and he says he's trying to, he, he, he lays hands on him, and he said, all of a sudden, he said, you, and he says, this has been imparted to you. This gift is being imparted to you. And, he, and, and all of a sudden, the guy starts shaking uncontrollably. Now, do people shake in your meetings sometimes? But they stop. This man came, now listen to me. I've seen people that every time they come to church, they shake. They come in shaking, they sit shaking. They got the shaking thing. I've even had people tell me, when I shake, you know you're under the anointing. I said, come out. That's just weird. <laughs> but uh, this man started shaking uncontrollably and he went home he, at times of season that shaking would come on uncontrollably and his body would shake and it was starting to freak him out but they said this is some kind of gift from God how many know that's just flakier and an eight-legged ape now why anybody number one would think that number two and, and so this guy, you know, he's t he, and he, was, he, was, he spoke another language, and he had a little English. It was diff difficult for me to be able to talk to him. So I wasn't getting everything he was saying. So finally he asked us, and, and, and me and my wife, to come pray for him. So we set some time aside. We went to his house, and we began to minister deliverance. Now his wife was a former prostitute. He, his father and stuff was in, uh, in a very, very bad satanic cult. Okay, so that, that tells you there's some issues there. But this thing here, the shaking thing, came from the thing in church. And he would sit there, and the thing would start, and he couldn't control it. And so me and my wife cast 33 devils out of this guy, one after the other, working. We, we had to go through some things and get some information. We, we cast the devil. This man was totally set free. But I got to tell you, folks, you need to watch out who's laying hands you got to watch out about weird manifestations. Not everything. I've had people shake. I've had, it's the power of God going through them. They, they vibrate and shake. But you know, you should be drawn to Jesus Christ because of that, not go home and have some epileptic seizure. Everybody look at your neighbor and say amen. Now, this is the way you know the difference, by the fruit of the whole thing. You know the difference because you lift up Jesus Christ. You know the difference because people are being saved. Now listen, I believe in signs and wonders, but what kind of signs and wonders are in the Bible? Let's look at the New Testament. Have you ever looked at the New Testament to see what the signs and wonders were? People being healed, people being delivered, people being set free, people being, praise God, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a sign and wonder. My wife's signs, and the main sign and wonder that works in our lives is salvation, people being filled with the Holy Ghost. We get 90% of the people in our meetings that get saved get filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time. That's a sign. Most people don't have that. When we lay hands on people, we almost ever, sometimes 100% of them will get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a sign. That's a sign and a wonder. Whole rows of people get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's an awesome sign and wonder. Everybody say amen. Because that, that sign and wonder means something to God. What I don't think we ought to do is follow weird signs and wonders. As an example, somebody told me one time, they said, well, I have, you know, I'm going over here to the, the gold dust meeting. I said, why? They said, well, don't you think that God's in it when the gold dust comes? I go, is it real gold dust? They don't know. 
I said, uh, why would God shoot gold dust? If God wanted you to have some gold, wouldn't it be solid gold or something? Yeah. Dust make you sneeze. <laughs> I thought about it for a little while. I said, I said, I said that sounds kind of strange. Well, you know, this is the sign that's appearing. This is gold dust all over the people. and they, They're anointed with this gold dust. Okay, uh, could God do something like that? I suppose he could. Why would God do it? I don't know. Okay? But is that going to be a continuous sign that's going to follow people all over the world and be the keynote of their ministry? I found out and did a little, a little investigation into some of these groups. These, some of these people aren't living right, folks. Just going to tell you quite frankly. They're just not living right. They're after money. I'm exposing it right now. They're after your money and people are giving them their money. If somebody comes on the television and tells you, if you buy my miracle water, you'll be healed, and you send them money, you deserve to get built, is what you deserve. That's ridiculous. There's nowhere in the Bible where it talks about miracle water in the New Testament. I had a guy, I remember I, I received a, 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 a message from this guy. It was supposed to be a personal prophecy. You ever get one of those through the mail? It was a personal prophecy that went to about 10,000 people. How many know that's a hard, little hard sell on that deal? And this guy said, if you send me $10 or $20, I'm going to send you a life-size cutout of me. And you lay on the cutout and spread your arms on the cutout, that life-size cutout, and the anointing will come upon you. If you have your wallet in your pocket when you do it, you'll get $10,000. I'm serious. Now, you would be serious. I, I, look, folks, you think I'm, I'm kidding, but people give the guy money. They're desperate for anything, you know? Uh, we used to have a guy that, that I really liked him. He was, he was one of my most, he was one of my favorite shows to watch. My, my friend Bob Long and up in Oregon and me, you know, two preachers, we'd have meetings together, and we would go over to his house, and we'd pop popcorn, and we'd put on the show. And we'd sit there and really laugh because it's just... You, you have to laugh or you cry. And this guy, he would smoke this great, you know, he would smoke this great big cigar and he'd have a bottle of scotch sitting there next to him. And he's supposed to be a man of God. And when he taught, he was a very, very powerful man of God when he first started. And he worked within full gospel circles. And the guy could teach really well when he taught. But he had this other side to him. And then he'd show his wife riding around on a horse and they play ZZ Top, she's got legs. <laughs> because she was a, because she was a formal, former porno uh, woman. And she's in ministry today. She's better than he is, though. I've watched her. She's awesome, man. I, I, she's an awesome teacher. But anyway, he would go there and he would take this bottle of scotch and he'd be sipping this bottle of scotch and then he would, he would look at the camera and he said, I want you blank, and I mean he cussed like a sailor. You blankety blank people, I want $10,000 in here within this hour and I want it now, you blankety blank, blankety blanks. Just like that and he'd get it every time. So some way, somehow, people are pretty gullible, I would say. Now, I'm saying that for the sake of the cameras, but I've got to tell you guys, when we talk about signs and wonders, what, what Satan can't do is he can't discredit the true ones. So he has to come in with some false ones to try to get amongst the group so that he can begin to, to entice people. Found out that some of these people in these revivals that we've been having were having sex with everything that moved. Found out, you know, later on that many people were, were homosexuals or many people. There was one man that was supposedly a prophet and everywhere he would go, churches would blow up and different things. This happened for years, but he was one of the most popular preachers in all of America. Now, I knew about it because people had told me about it. And I told some of our young people about it to keep them away from going to his Bible school and stuff. But the man was a homosexual. He struggled with this for years. Now, I'm not against somebody struggling, but when they struggle like that, they shouldn't be in full-time ministry. And he would go out and he would find little boys in the congregation that drove him and stuff, and he would end up ruining their lives. But you see, he was one of the most well-known prophets in the body of Christ. And when I would get in his meetings, me and my wife would sense something wasn't quite right. He was very charismatic, 
But folks, I'm saying this to say this to you. Look for ministries that are accountable to the right type of ministries. Look for ministries that have a reputation, many, many years of being good ministries, and that have not got off into other things that they shouldn't get off into weird doctrine, aren't real controversial about weird doctrine. Look for people that to follow that have love and respect and that you know live, nobody's perfect, but you know uh, as well as they can are living for God. Look for ministries that aren't after money every time. That don't bilk you out of money all the time. Everybody say amen. amen. Don't be built by people who are just after your money. Now, it doesn't mean that prosperity is not real. I believe in prosperity. I preach it as strong as everybody because prosperity, biblical prosperity, is a true Bible doctrine. However, this, this thing that where, where that's all you hear is prosperity. All you hear is good things. I asked, began to ask the Lord about this, and he told me one of the greatest ways that sat satanic people have infiltrated the Christian circles is through motivational speaking. He said, because it sounds the same, it's new agey, but it sounds the same. So they'll come in to a new age group, or excuse me, a motivational group, and they can get in there because they have all the same jargon. In fact, a lot of the occult world uses the same type of jargon. It's all positive, it's upbeat, it's motivational. How many know, praise God, that we need motivation? Everybody say amen. We also need good spanking every once in a while. We also need to be told what's right and wrong. And you see, just to be motivated all the time, it seems to be taking over a huge growing number of churches where every time you go there, they preach a motivational message every single week to pump you up get you to give in the, in the deal. And they're saying, we're just positive around here. This is the way we believe. We're positive around here. This is where we're... But you, how many know, praise God, that there are parts of the Word of God that no matter which way you cut it, aren't what you call so positive? If I was going to go over to the book of Revelations, you know, and I call ourselves word people, if I was going to go to the book of Revelations, there are th letters to the church that aren't what you would call real motivational. What it does say is, if you're lukewarm, I'll hack you out my mouth. That's what it says. How many know that's not on most people's confession pack? But it's nonetheless a very important truth that needs to be shared. Everybody say amen. amen. Find yourself places where people preach faith but they're putting faith in God and not in themselves. Some people preach faith like Star Wars. The force be with you. You notice that? It's all about what they can do, how you can manipulate the system. That, and I believe in principles. I believe that the Word of God teaches these things. I believe that, praise God, we can tap into these things as principle and work it because, you know, that's part of our Christian life and experience. But you cannot manipulate God. Everybody say amen. amen. And I, I'm really concerned. Now here, I'm going to finish up with this. I want you to l listen to me real carefully and then I'll let you go. Because I know you've been here a long time. And I hope you got something out of this. Amen. I was watching a very, very, uh, very popular, one of the most popular Christian programs about the supernatural realm. There was a girl on there that sounded all good. I mean, her testimony was dynamic and everything, and I'm sure she's sincere. I do not think she's a plant. I think she's sincere. But she's got around some of these people I'm talking about. They gathered her in just like they tried to gather Tim. They took her over here, and she began to get a hold of some of the things they're talking about because what they're doing in some of these meetings is bringing in Eastern meditation and mysticism. Sometimes they'll call it soaking They'll call it other things. But when you break it down, it's a form of prayer that really comes from Hinduism and stuff like that. Now, this particular little gal would talk about how you can ascend up into the heavenlies anytime you want and fight demons. Right there, that ought to tell you something's wrong because you can't ascend out of your body anytime you want unless you're into the occult world where they teach you to do that. Are you listening to me? She began to talk about this, and, and of course, <clears throat> nobody was 
I was sitting there, you know, all this stuff was going off on the inside of me. I said, I'm going to order the, her CD so I can listen to this myself because I can't believe what she's saying about this. So I brought her over and I listened to it. And it all sounded pretty good. You know, I wish I could, you know, it almost makes you want to wish when you listen to something like that. It's almost like there's a part of you who says, man, I, wouldn't that be cool to be able to do that? That's the catch, you see. Isn't that, Tim? Isn't that, isn't that the catch? You see, and she said at the end of this whole thing, she said, now lay on your backs, close your eyes, and look at the back of your eyelids, and we're all going to concentrate because we're going to ascend up into the heavenly realm so we can learn how to ascend up to heaven and fight demons in the sky and all this kind of thing. How many know, folks, that that is nothing but a bunch of new age nonsense? So I want to say this to you, just as a warning in this last session. Supernatural, we want that, don't we? We want the Spirit of God to fall and move and do things. We want the gifts of the Spirit. But when you're praying, please pray this way for your pastors and your leaders. Lord, we take authority over anything or any manifestation or any doctrine that's not of God. We take authority over anybody who would ever manifest anything that's not of God. We take authority over those evil spirits that would do that. We bind them and render them harmless and ineffective against the service. We only lose, we only want the true power and move of God. And I pray this way. This is not a bad prayer. Expose the people amongst us that are wrong, have wrong motives, are moving in these things. Because unfortunately, I could, I'm seeing hundreds of people that I, used, I love that I've been around for years that used to be solid get swayed into this stuff. And here, too long ago, I was praying, and the Lord says, start ringing the bell, son. Because I've known for years this is going to come. And there's going to be a division amongst true people that move with God about this. I say, let's stay on the right side of things. Amen. Just because it's supernatural, just because there's crowds, doesn't necessarily mean it's God. Stand to your feet.